Ui, 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 ui. Electric flight is everywhere. We are here at Extra Aircraft next to the Extra NG. Um, now it is time for me to fly in a simulator and to test how it works. It's the first time for me to, to fly such a new aerobatic plane. And I hope to be this year at the factory at Extra as well and do some real aerobatics. So first, sit. Yeah. Do you want to start from lane or? Runway. Runway. You fly Extra? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but gliders. And you, you always use full power or? Yep. <laughs> you have a full time so don't, <laughs> yeah, we don't, have don't worry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you usually do a lot of rolls and uh... yeah, so actually you can do like every maneuver that you can do in the real plane you can do in the simulator as well. Or you could just practice your landing as well. Yeah, the orientation, it's, it's good with the VR, but it's not so easy to always look at the side uh, to see the angles and so on. It's... The real plane is even worse. <laughs> okay. Ah, we didn't crash. Nice. Good job. <laughs> you just pause. Awesome. Awesome feeling. But I need to do it in real life. Yeah, next time we have to do it. Is it harder to land in real life? Because that was somehow it worked out. No, it's, a, it's a really harder. Okay. So I think That's I can teach you. Okay. We, we do some landings and then you will be fine. It's not a miracle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. To, to feel the G-forces, we, we have to jump into the real plane. Right. Yeah, we're doing this next time. See you. This looks like a futuristic dinosaur. It's really built like the FPV drones here out of carbon fiber plates, like a puzzle put together. It looks great, but I think it's still a very early uh, concept. Also the garment here, it's 3D printed <laughs> and it's hard to enter the plane because you get here the rotors onto your head. <laughs> Here, I think they want to retrofit a stemic glider. A lot of batteries here. And a powerful MROX, or I'm not sure. We are here at Alpha Frog a very interesting ultralight plane with an electric propulsion system and foldable uh, propeller. What is about, what, what's the concept of this plane? Uh, for what is it? Is it for perhaps gliding, fun, flying uh, bigger distances or what yeah. are you aiming for? <laughs> yes, hello, thank you. I'm Marco from Alpha Frog and uh, we updated a 40-year-old French ultralight aircraft. This was the first aircraft that toured the world. Actually, Patrice Francesi, 40 years ago, did a 36,000 kilometer trip and he flew 600 hours with this um, predecessor. And um, I was fascinated by this because you could normally not think that you can make a tour with such an aircraft. And uh, this was done with a Rotax engine. It was a two-stroke engine. It's, oh, okay. it's very noisy and uh, he, he was uh, failure, had three failures and he survived luckily. Um, but this aircraft has potential and we brought it in the future. So we made like a digital motorbike of the air. Yeah, so it, this is also now out, built out of composite, I think the fuselage. The wing is uh, it's covered. It's covered, yeah. The wing has covers, but it's all pure carbon. Okay. And it's handmade in Germany. Everything is in, uh, has been changed to carbon. Also, the, the main gear is a special flexing main gear, very comfortable. Also, the uh, nose wheel is damped. The main gear has inner tubings with hydraulic brakes from Beringer. Okay. And um, yeah, you have different canopy versions. It's all modular, so you can choose a cabrio canopy or a full canopy. Okay. Perhaps you can, or 
Let's have a look, a closer look here at the propulsion system. It's an electric motor from, I think, Geiger here. Yes. Um, how many kilowatts output does it have? Mm -hmm. And what is the battery capacity, battery range with flying? Yeah, it's very special because uh, we upgraded the weight. So it has a maximum takeoff weight of 300 kilogram now. It used to be 250. Uh, and this way we can take in four battery packs, which are separately managed. So they're failure safe and they're 60 kilogram batteries then and can contain uh, two kilowatt hours in the standard kilowatt hours um, and if you upgrade you can uh, further enhance to 15 kilowatt hours wow. okay and with this you can fly easily one and a half hours real flight plus reserve and what's the cruise speed so how many kilometers can i cover in these one and a half hours uh, the cruise speed is uh, here 100 kilometers that's uh, an honest honest uh, expression but you could travel faster but then it would uh, not allow the range. Yeah. The maximum speed is 120, um, like a cruise speed, 120, and uh, never exceed 140. Okay, and the, um, the minimum speed? Yeah, it's actually 45, but we indicate 50 as a stall speed. So you can fly very slow, which allows you to fly like a parachute or a, a paraglider. Yeah, okay. and. Uh, can you uh, thermal somewhere in a thermal, or uh, is it <laughs> from the not good enough from the aerodynamics to to stay airborne? <laughs> yeah, of course it's not a sailplane, but yeah. it's very light and it can very, fly very slow. So it actually allows you to use external energies intensively, and we made a special software for that as well, so that you can be assisted in using that. Okay, here we see the cockpit. We have a nicely handmade interior, uh, which is done in Stuttgart. And we have a nice stick, which comes from Stefly, <laughs> Stefan, and uh, has been really uh, made with the same colors. And this is our digital cockpit. And we have that on a display. So this is just a mock-up for it. So here we see the Alpha Frog flight system, we call it AFS. It's basically a combination of an iPad app that can be updated over the air, of course, via the App Store, as you know it. And also a moving map that you have as a backup system, a second backup system. Um, it can act as a backup system, but otherwise also as a board computer. It's connected to a sensory box where you have a, a temp sensing, an angel of attack and an engine monitoring and a LiDAR system connected to it. LiDAR system as well, what yes. are you doing with it? Yeah, you have a 100 meter range and it's uh, for ground detection. Ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, when you're close to the ground, it indicates your height. Okay. And also we uh, incorporated the LARIS, the wind measurement, okay. which is very accurate and we very much like it. Also the accuracy of the uh, heading, 0.05 degrees. With this, we have the ability to predict thermals. So we have a probability of uh, thermals uh, depending on your uh, actual weather condition. And because you have the temp and the historic data, you can uh, predict uh, uh, where thermals could be. This is made for a five-year-old. So our <laughs> synthetic vision is uh, quite nice in, in the display quality. You have also an integration that you can set your transponder, your radio. You have a database of all the airports in it and can see the basic data. You can um, edit real quick uh, a very simple uh, flight plan. This can be then energy optimized by uh, the actual weather conditions and there can be recommendations to take uh, a different approach. And then you have your gates uh, that indicate uh, the way you should uh, fly. You see air spaces and also you have all the collision data. We have uh, FLARM, ADS-B as, as a standard and uh, this is displayed then in, in the um, synthetic vision and indicated that there is um, there's an object approaching. We further uh, want to integrate a camera system that is doing the 
In German, it's the Luftraumbeobachtung. Ah, okay. Uh, so better than your uh, as a human, you can uh, make um, uh, spectate the the sky and see potential obstacles coming that are not sending out any signals. That sounds really amazing. And what's the status of the project? Can we buy such a plane already, or is it flying already? Yes, um, it actually flew several hundred hours already. Uh, with a combustion engine okay. and only with 250 kilogram. And now we upgrade it and right after the show we have the final tests and uh, we will send in the test results to the DGIC, which is the French uh, uh, Air Space Authority. And uh, they will then give us a uh, fish, which is uh, allowed to be or which is possible to use also for other countries like Germany um, and you can fly with that then. Wow, amazing. And one last question, what will be the price range yeah. of such a plane? This is a special version now with dual color Alcantara and dual canopies with cabrio and closed canopy sliding everything and Beringer uh, um, uh, drive system and this uh, cost 113,000 plus tax okay. ready to fly with a combustion engine okay. in this case but you can swap engines and um, the kit starts with 43,000 euro okay but without propulsion system right there you don't have a propulsion system you need to add wheels paint covers Okay. And there's no interior style and no avionics. Okay. But for the kit builder, this is, a, this is an offer. And we also have some kits that contain more than that. Okay. Really a very interesting project. Looking forward to see more about it. Perhaps even fly it at some point. Uh, You're invited. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's here a completely different world to the gliders, helicopters, even bigger helicopters like the R66. I'm not sure if there's even the R88, I think that's a brand new one, a bigger one. Airbus Helicopters is there. This looks like a really lightweight helicopter with a raw carbon finish. Not sure if it is sold like this. With such a small helicopter, ultralight helicopter perhaps, we already made some videos in the French Alps. We are here at the JMB. Last year we had a closer look at the Phoenix ultralight motor glide, I would say. Let's see if there are any news. First, I was uh, looking at, the, at this stuff down here and I didn't recognize what it is, but it's an electric scooter, I think. Not good for the drag, but with these bush wheels, it's uh, already horrible, so it doesn't matter, I think. <laughs> and it nearly looks like a Steeflight plane here. That's completely white, this one here. I don't know why. It looks like a fat profile. Looks like a, a plane out of a movie for a child or something like this. And someone just made something which perhaps can fly, I don't know. Here we are on the outside at the Aero Friedrichshafen, at the business aviation sector. Um, there's a big news this year. There's a business aviation dome. Yesterday night we were there at a party as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's really huge here, growing fast. And um, it's not completely my, my price range of planes, but it's interesting to see what's available there. <laughs> We are here at Pilatus and they are making the best uh, marketing videos recently. I really like one, perhaps I will link it up there because uh, it, it's really good storytelling. Small nice plane, great interior, comfortable and even some cargo space here. So you don't need to fit the electric scooter on the outside of the plane, you can just put it in the luggage compartment here. <laughs> Thank you. 
it was an incredible Aero in Friedrichshafen again. Thank you so much for watching, for stopping by at my booth. And then I hope to see you in the next video and at the next gliding expo in two years. Cheers, guys.